Now let's continue with investigating Stokes' theorem for forms. Remember we've got Green's theorem in the plane. D is a nice region in the plane, and let's look at F as PI plus QJ is a nice vector field on D. Remember, uh, it has to be nice on the entirety of D, not just the boundary. That's a subtle thing about Green's theorem. And the way I like to say it is the scalar curl, the integral over the interior of the scalar curl is the integral of the, ba of the boundary, the circulation around the boundary, around the closed curve that forms the boundary. And scalar curl, if you're not familiar, familiar with that notation, is just dq dx minus dp dy. And so the first question I ask here, and you can stop, try to do it yourself if you want. It's a little vague, might be a little hard to do it without help. Um, express the scalar curl of f dA using forms d and f tilde. So we want to translate the scalar curl. That's the one thing we haven't done explicitly because I've been working mostly in R3. What about in R2? Well, we should have a pretty good guess. Probably d f tilde. We take the function, uh, the vector field f, turn it into a, a one form. That totally makes sense still. There's nothing special about uh, R3 there. There are some things that are definitely special about R3, but here, that's pretty obviously that should be f tilde in two dimensions. Okay, let's take d of that. That's just dp wedge dx plus dq wedge dy. And then dp is a sum of partials, but there's only two variables, and I don't need the dx one because that would die, and I don't need the dy here. So it's just going to be partial p partial y dy dx, a little space there, dy wedge dx plus partial q, and only partial x is going to contribute here, dx wedge dy. Oh, guess what? That's going to be exactly this expression, the scalar curl, put in parentheses, times dx wedge dy. Oh, but dx wedge dy is just going to be dA. Okay, and so in fact, if we just and we if we uh, express it in terms of that, so that is exactly scalar over curl f dA. Okay, so the left hand side is nothing more but df than df tilde. So taking this expression we already have, this is just d. Oops, let's delete all that. That's just going to be df tilde. Ooh, that came out in a weird font. Oh yeah, I forgot it. Um, not that it, not that you care, but okay. D F tilde. Let's bold it and tildeify it. All right, and then what is integral F D R dot D R? Oh yeah, that was just uh, the one form version, which was uh, F tilde. Boom. Okay. Oh, and I don't need a D A. There we go. So. In the one form version, if we have any vector field, we first turn it into a one form to get all this cool stuff activated. We integrate it in one form fashion over the boundary. It's the same as if we took d on the inside and took the integral over the inside. Oh, and I don't need the double integral symbol anymore. I promised I wouldn't do that anymore. There we go. OK, so if that's true for the tilde of any one form, well, that's just an arbitrary one. Uh, sorry, the tilde of any vector field. That's just an arbitrary one form, alpha p dx plus q dy. So who needs vector fields? We're just going to rewrite this, and we're just going to take that, and oh, I don't need it to be bold. I'm just going to call that alpha, and I'm just going to call that alpha as well. So notice the similarity here. When it was a function, I could integrate that over a zero-dimensional set, and that's the same as the boundary, and that's the same as the integral over c of df. It's exactly the same. The only thing that's changed is the letter I've used for the input. Exactly the same statement. And we're getting to see the, the unifying power of the form technology. OK. What about the classical Stokes theorem in R3? Now we've got a surface in R3. F is a nice vector field on that surface. Then the integral over the, uh, the flux of the curl is supposed to be the circulation of the original vector field around the boundary. OK. So. Let's do it in these two stages again. Let's just go ahead, go ahead and think of it as a th statement about vector fields and, and use tildes, and then we can just convert that to something about forms so that vector fields won't be necessary. OK, well, let's just, I'm just going to copy this down and start changing it. The curl of f, remember what that was? It was you would take f and tildeify it to make it a form, and then take d of it. And that would be um, 
um, the two form that gets integrated over the surface. And I'm going to just change that into a single integral. So this is what we're doing on the left-hand side. We're taking f, turning it in one form, taking d. That's exactly a two form. It's ready to integrate over a surface, and we're good to go. This, of course, is something we already know. This guy is just the integral of the tilde of f straight up over the boundary. Boom. We're done. Once again, it's just taking something, something and either taking the integral over the boundary or the integral of the whole thing of d. And there's nothing special about it having come from a vector field. So we can just take, where's that alpha? I'll pick it up here. We can just go ahead and take alpha and stick it right in there. Oops. So if alpha is a one form, the integral over the boundary of a surface of that one form makes sense. The integral of d alpha, which is a two form, over the surface makes sense. And again, we get this theorem. Well, now you can guess what the divergence theorem is going to look like. The claim is that, see, I'd say here, by now you should be getting rather bored with the answer. The claim is that it's going to be exactly this. It's just I'm going to change this to a triple integral over e. It's going to be a double integral of the boundary. And then alpha here is a two form. So it makes sense to integrate it over the boundary of a region. That's essentially a flux integral. Or d alpha is a three form. That's the kind of thing that you can integrate over a region. And why is this true? It's because, remember, d of alpha is the div. Um, I don't think I'm going to do it out explicitly in terms of the tildes and stars, because we're really getting, um, getting the idea. And then just take a look at 5 real quick. Pause it, the video if you want. We haven't done much about integrating over high dimensional surfaces in high dimensions, like a 17 dimensional surface in R32. But the great thing about forms is, even if we really had only the vaguest notion of what that thing, what those would mean, we have a pretty confident guess as to what Stokes' theorem would say in that case. And it won't be hard to at least do sort of basic ideas of what this, uh, these ideas will, will be, and we'll do that. And indeed, this will be Stokes' theorem. And we'll be able to prove it from scratch in full generality when it's n dimensions and, and a k form, because it really won't be any harder.